Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. We're going to continue working on Daniel chapter 11. And it's been taking a long time uh, dealing with some of these verses to understand their historical and present truth application. Uh, but before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Uh, dear gracious Heavenly Father, we invite your Spirit's presence here as we open your word. We know, Lord, that uh, you have been giving us light, the light on the past that shines into the present. And we just pray that we can see it clearly and that we can obey your voice. We pray for one another. We pray for people in this movement who have known the truth and those that are searching for truth. We just ask that you can lead and guide them. We ask for your Holy Spirit to press upon our hearts and minds uh, the need of understanding your word and that um, it can bring power and conviction uh, that we may represent you to others. Be with us now. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so last few days we've been working on verse 30. And there's a lot in this verse. So we know that this is addressing both the fall of Western Rome and then the transition from paganism to papalism. It's basically Great Controversy chapter 2 and 3. So that means it's packing a lot of history into a single verse. Now, just a, a little note about the lexical sum. So one of the things we do is we add up the, the Strong's numbers and we can get a uh, what we call a lexical number for a verse. And, and this one has a lexical number of 73,909. Now, 73,909 is 202 years and 128 days. So like, so we can take that number. And I'll show you what I'm doing here. So we can, we can take a number like 73,909 and we could divide it by 365 and a quarter, right? So you're going to get 202 years and then you subtract 202 and you take the, the, the remainder there and then you just multiply it by 365 and a quarter. That's the easy way just to get the number of days. So 202 years and 128 and a half days. And depending what dates those are going to show up on would depend what date you start on. So in, in different years, it's even if you started on the same date with the 0.5, you know that half of the time it would start on, let's say if you started on January 1st, half of the time it would end up on September 13th and the other times it might end up on September 12th, I, I think is how it works with this one. Um, might be September 12th and September 13th, or September 13th and September 14th. Anyway, the point is, because of the 0.5, that means if you're starting on different years, it's going to end on a different date half the time. If it was 20, 128 and a quarter, you would know that three out of four times it would be longer. It would be one date later. I don't know. Anyway, that's maybe a little bit too much information for most people. The other thing that we can do is we can take this number and we can divide it by a prophetic year. So in this case, you would get uh, 203 years and you would have this remainder here, this decimal, and you would multiply that by 360 and you're going to get something like 10 days. So you could have uh, that number represent 203 years in 10 days. Now, if you went from you know, 1798, and you counted 203 years and 10 days, you'd come to, well, it depends where you count in 1798, right? So if you counted from January 1st, I think you'd come to January 11th, uh, 2002, something like that. So, so these are useful. You can add spans of time to this. So one of the things that we had done is we had taken this other number, 13431, which was grieved, return, and have indignation. So that was the Hebrew numbers added up to that. And then we added 490, and that was the number of days from June 7th, 1982 to July 18, 2020. And in our chart, 
that we had done here. Oops, no, that's not the right one. So you can see on the chart, you got the grieve, returned, have indignation. Uh, and I took that 13,431, added 490, and you can see it creates 13,921. And we could rearrange those numbers to be 391 and a half. So it's just an interesting symbols that are there. Now you can see on the bottom, I took December 31st, 1797. Uh, if you go from the start of December 31st, 1797, and you take that lexical sum for the verse, 73,909, and you add 490 to that one, it will bring you to the end of September 11th, 2001. Whether that's significant or not, I mean, the fact that we can do that with 1798. Now, of course, we're including all of the last day of 1798. So that means we're, we're just bringing the 1260 up to that last day. So you would say there's 1260. Obviously, before that, so this would be like this. We have this 1260 years in here somewhere, and this would be so we counted from January 1st, 538. And that would give you a period of 1260 years where you're counting from the first day of the year to the last day of the year. Right. Obviously, you know, we don't have an event for any of those dates. And I should move this over just whoops. This over just a little bit. So it's on the other side of that. So these are things that we do with these lexical numbers that try to help us understand these connections. Now just to go over this chart uh, again, so we got November twenty second, nine seventy seven BC. So obviously I could count from the spring, I, I think probably the divided kingdom would have first begun in the spring. That's when you would have had uh, Jeroboam rebelling and bringing the northern uh, tribes with him. Obviously, he's going to build these golden calves. And then in the 15th day of the eighth month, in November, which is November 22nd, 977 BC, he's going to be offering um, on the altar in Bethel. And that's when uh, the prophet comes in and uh, gives the prophecy of Josiah, right? And we know from 977, there's 14,053 years in an inclusive count to 476 AD. And then from 476 AD, there's 977 years to 1453. Now, the interesting point here is that 476 AD, if you add that, so that's the fall of Western Rome and the fall of Eastern Rome, right? So you're connecting those dates and you count from the fall of Eastern Rome 476 years, it brings you to 1929. And 1929 is the year of the Lateran Treaty. There's a period of 116 days between the February 11th and June 7th date. And it's interesting that the fall of Constantinople on the Gregorian calendar occurs on June 7th in 1453. And we already connected this 53 years uh, from the Lateran Treaty, the June 7th date, to Pope John Paul II and Ronald Reagan meeting on June 7th, 1982. So we got three June 7ths in a row. And uh, the significance of June 7th also has been mentioned that it's um, uh, was the birthday of JFK, uh, I believe. That's what was said. Uh, the first Catholic so-called president of the United States. So that, that has some connection to uh, the Catholic Church there, obviously, and the Lateran Treaty. And then we have that grieve, return, and indignation. And this is dealing with... Uh, the fall of Western Rome. So it's sort of a, a mirror. And then we get to July 18, 2020 as a symbol. Now, um, you know, if we take off those 490 days, I can't remember which date it brings us to, but it's going to bring us to about a year and a half earlier. So I, somewhere in, I think it was, oh, it was March 16th, uh, 2019 is, would be the date of the 13431. 
And March 16th um, has some symbolism uh, connected with the fall of, uh, well, it's the end of the siege under Jehoiachim happens on March 16th, 597 BC. So that might have some significance there. It has some personal significance to me, but it doesn't really apply here. March 16th, 2013 has significance to me. But it does. I don't think it applies here to this line. It's just one of those coincidences. So we have this line. So we've we've taken this this part of it. But we have another uh, symbol uh, that we haven't added in here. And um, I need to do this. I think I put the footnote there for 33. Yep. Yeah, so the 13,433 days, June 7th, 1982 to March 16th, 2019, plus the 490 days brings us to July 18, 2020. Um, so the other one that we have that we've been struggling with, especially yesterday, are the people that, uh, let me see, where is it here? And they shall, so shall he do. That's this 6213 is the Hebrew number. And we're saying that this is referring to paganism continuing after 476 AD. So that's just the idea that he shall do, that he shall be, that he shall exist, he shall be making, he shall be acting, right? There's all these different things uh, attached to that word. And he shall even return. Well, he shall return. And um, of course, we have the present truth application. That's the Lateran Treaty. And have intelligence. Present truth is John Paul II and Reagan on June 7th, 1982. So what we don't have is uh, a historical application for where he shall even return. So we got 476 is just the end of Western Rome. We parallel that to the end of the papacy in 1798. But when it says he shall even return, we don't have anything for that, right? Not for the historical application. And so this would have to refer to something in paganism what could we place there? Now, return can mean lots of different things. It can mean turn about and go in the opposite direction. It can mean come back uh, from where you were, which is kind of the same thing. It's the word shuv, right? So it's the word sometimes translated turn, sometimes translated as return. Like, shall the, the Lord made, how's it go? When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, that phrase, this Psalm 126, you have... uh this, this captivity that's referred to, but the turn, return, the Lord turn again, that's just the word shuv. So you can see it's sometimes translated as turn. And so we don't, we don't usually use the word in that sense. We don't say it turned again, the captivity, right? We wouldn't say that in modern English, but that idea exists in Hebrew, the idea of turning something, which we would, uh, you know, we'd say return from the captivity, right? In modern English. So when it comes to paganism, we know that there's this attempted revival prior to 476. But how could we say that paganism has returned or turned? Could it refer to Clovis in 538 being baptized or 508, pardon me, being baptized on December 25th? Would that be constituted a return? That would be a turning or a repentance, sometimes it refers to a repentance. Is that, or is there some other event? Any thoughts on that? So I've puzzled over it. I, I don't know of any particular event. I mean, we could look at some of the battles, but I don't see that anything really aligns to the idea of, of a turning or a returning. Any thought about the December 25th, 508 as the historical? So if I put this here, Clovis, baptism so i'm using this this word turn in the sense of like a returning or a conversion is there any parallel there are you trying to parallel the end from the beginning oh yeah that's kind of what this is doing this whole diagram that we have is is addressing the end and the beginning right so that's why you know we're looking at uh, the fall of western rome all those things end up paralleling in some way but wouldn't this be more of a, a separate line with what you're placing here with Clovis's baptism to um, the land? Yeah. 
Well, in a sense, it's a, a separate line. I mean, we could create a separate line uh, where we would place it in is in that 977 years from 476 to 1453 or to, to 1798, if we're going to add on the 345 years, it's 1322 years. Because here we have the grieved returned and have indignation. So now we have in this history, we're saying that we have they shall do, right? And so this is, is like a mirror because we know that this, this is addressing the history here for the fall of Western Rome to start of the 1260. So we didn't really put this on this line. Yeah, we could probably draw it on another line, but so if we were going to do this here, I'm just going to copy this just to take up the part in there. So get rid of this. So we have the grieved. That's going to be, we marked that as, how did we describe it? 395. Uh, the return is 410. And the indignation then is that period of time from 476 to 538 or 508. Right. So that's how we understood it. So grieved, uh, that's 395. Uh, return, 410. And the indignation, 476 to, I'm actually going to put 508. Okay. So that's how I understand this, how we're, we're applying this here. So this is a mirror, right? Then what we have is we, we have from so shall he do, back to this. So so shall he do. So this is going to be, still after 476. So this is just this idea of this continuation of, and so that's going to refer to the fact that they're still continuing. So it's kind of the, it's overlapping there, but he shall even return. So if we take that as 508, or maybe we could have that as 538. So, but I put here 508 you know, for Clovis's baptism. And then have intelligence. So that's going to be that history from 508 to uh, 538. That's the way that I would look at it. So it's this influence of Christianity, or they're going to influence Christianity to 538. Okay. So that, that's how I've been thinking of it. That we got that, that they're overlapping, but they're, they're referring to paganism. Because this is first the fall of Western Rome and then the transition from paganism to papalism, putting upon this garment of Christianity. And then that's why we have then when it says arms shall stand on his part. Again, we have Clovis's baptism, but this is marking the start of the 1290 and the 1335 and addressing Daniel 12 verse 11 and 12. shall stand on his part, the transition uh, from the daily uh, to paganism or, or to papalism. So from uh, paganism to papalism, right? To stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, remove paganism, shall take away the daily. So this is re reiterating some of the other things in verse 30, but adding to it, they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. So it's going to now address the papacy being set up. So all of this is basically leading up to what's going to happen with the papacy. So, I mean, we understand that already about these verses. It's not like this is anything new, but it's just giving specific dates to these events, to these symbols that are being used so that we can apply a present truth application in a specific way. Any thoughts on that? Nobody's got any ideas of what we can do with that? I don't have a direct suggestion at this point. Stephen, do you got any thoughts on this? I don't. I'm kind of looking at uh, Theodosius from 391. Okay. He, uh, he sort of banned paganism in the empire. So that was 70 years after the Sunday Law. So I'm just kind of... Mm. I think that was interesting. I'm being in the year 391. Yeah. So that year, you had the Vestal Virgins disbanded and the flame extinct extinguished there was like an eternal flame in that temple in Rome extinguished them so 
this is kind of like separate from what you're looking at, but I'm just sort of seeing. But but yeah, it, it is also um, they should remove the sanctuary. What's the words there? Like in verse 31, where it talks about removing the sanctuary of strength and taking away the daily. So it might it might actually apply to that. They shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and take away the daily. Pollute the sanctuary. So that would be where they prohibit the sac- sacrifices. And you're saying they they take this flame and put it out. Yes. Kind of, okay. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, the Britannica article is uh, March seventh, twenty twenty four. That they updated it in the uh, March seventh. But anyway, yeah. So that might apply there. So I think that that would be interesting because it does address the pagan sanctuary. And so there's a progression that happens there. Yeah, so they, they call it the Enoch, or Enoch, Edict of 391. So that's no one is to go into the sanctuaries, walk through the temples, or raise his eyes to statues created by the labor of man. The thing is, that, you know, there's so much history in here. But, but when it comes to, you know, Daniel chapter 11, so one of the things we have to keep in mind is that this is, it's choosing particular events that, you know, they're not obscure events. They are major events that we need to recognize that fit into this theme, right? So that's why, like, the fall of Western Rome, uh, the fall of Eastern Rome, uh, the fall of uh, the papacy, all these things are extremely important and how we look at them and how we connect them. You know, I'm not still not 100% happy with verse 30 as far as the historical application. I think it's better than what we had. That's kind of interesting. So one of the things that we, we look at, when we look at the time of the end, 1798, and we look at the time of the end in 1989, and we look at the time of the end in connected with the end of the 70 years, we, we end up with two different dates. So well, one of the things to note, okay. So Stephen, from February 15, 1798 to August 29, 1799, do you remember the number of days between those two dates? Say the dates again, please. Seven, uh, 1798, February 15th, and August 29th, 1799. Did you ever have significance regarding the period of time between those two dates? Did you ever address that? I think it was, was it 560 yeah. something? No, 560. Yeah. What, what was the significance of that? Did you have some significance to that? Well, I connected it to the siege of Jerusalem. It was 560 days from the 10th day of the 10th month. Ah, to, okay. To the, is it the ninth day of the fourth month? Yeah. Okay. So that's, okay. That's what that was. I knew there was some significance, uh, somewhere. Just couldn't remember where. So 560 days is the length of time of the siege. Okay, so it's yes. also going to be the same number of days from when the Pope's taken captive to when he dies. Okay. Yes. Okay. So another thing that's interesting is that, so if we go from when the Pope dies to September 11th, uh, 2001, that's going to be 73,792 uh, days. So remember, we had 73,909 as the lexical sum of verse 30. And the difference there is uh, uh, 11.7 or 117, which we use as a symbol for July 18. So that's kind of interesting. I'm just looking at some numbers that you guys can't see right now. So there's, there's a bunch of things that, you know, just sort of, they border on significant, but they don't all come together perfectly for me and now we have 116 days between february 11th and june 7th in 1929 there's a bunch of things yet i just really need to kind of sort out i'm not certain about okay um i know we're taking a lot of time on not getting anywhere but it's kind of needful at times so let's go back here for me anyway. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna leave this. We're gonna leave verse thirty. You know, we can think about that. We can come back to it another another time. So when we look at verse thirty-one, we spent a lot of time on this. 
for the historical application. And now we're going to say arms. So we have Clovis's baptism on December 25th, 508. That's going to be started the 1290 and the 1335, or Daniel 12, verse 11 and 12, right? So we have that. That's where we place it. Now, we could place it earlier because there is other dates that were given regarding Clovis, but this is the solid date that we have, I believe, is this December 25th, 508 date. And we got like 496 or something for his conversion, but it seems to be actually a false date. Uh, so he shall stand on his part on behalf of Papal Rome. So anyway, we just said that Papal Rome at the beginning, obviously it's going to represent the papacy in our time, but we don't have any specific. We just put papacy there. Right? So we didn't really get into how we're going to apply that. Now, Saying that the arm shall stand on his part, putting that as December 25th, 1991, you know, we could say it's from some earlier date, right? We could, we could start November 9th, 1989, or we could just put both of those dates. We could put this as that period of time rather than just it being one date. So we're going to say that period of time uh, shall stand on his part. Now, that's going to be a period of 700 and 77 inclusive days. So how do we, how do we address this as far as, I mean, we know that papal Rome represents the papacy in this time, but what, in what specific way? Right? So this is the papacy that has, now when it says the arm shall stand on his part. So if we go back to the preceding verse, it's going to talk about paganism. He shall do have intelligence uh, or do shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. So when we say it's them that shall forsake the Holy Covenant, and it says arm shall stand on his part, this is papal Rome. That is, those are the ones that forsake the Holy Covenant that the arms are going to stand on his part for. So that's why we have his is not paganism. His is the papacy, right? So does that make sense? Because it's going to have them that forsake the Holy Covenant, which is plural, but then it's going to have this singular, his. But we're still going to understand that to be now the papacy itself, rather than just apostate Christianity. So then when it says, uh, when we make a present truth application of this, the arm shall stand on his part, do, do we need to be more specific in saying like Pope John Paul II? rather than just the papacy. And then how would this polluting of the sanctuary of strength? So one of the things that we we would say here, uh, I mean, we could go back, you know, you have to go back in time, removing paganism, right, to 391. I'm just going to put this here, 391. What, what is it called? The edict? We'll just call it the edict. It's called Theodosius in 391. And then they shall take away the daily... Well, we're going to have this as 508. Whoops, should have done that. Yeah, that's right, 508. And they shall place, let us give, the abomination that make it desolate. Okay, so 538. So how does that look? Now, of course, the thing here is when it says arm shall stand on his part. I mean, we're marking that as 508, right? And then we go back and says, well, uh, they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. She'll take away the daily and place the abomination that make it desolate. So there's a three step there. So you have this sort of how the, the papacy or no, is going to have the military might of Western Rome, so to speak, what's left over of it, accomplish this three step process. And we're going to use 391 rather than usually we would use something like, you know, taking over Rome things like that. But here we're just going to have the Edict of Theodosius. And then when, uh, then we're going to have the Sunday Law in 538. Uh, what ends up happening with how it takes over all of these other churches. But you still have these people who are faithful to God. I don't know. Um, so then we have to put in present truth application. Historical application, is, are we happy with that? Verse 31 and 32. Now, when it comes to polluting the sanctuary of strength, so the present truth application. Now, how have we generally looked at that 
in the present truth, right? So what is it? What is the sanctuary of strength? So we know that the one that's going to stand on his part. So I guess what we really need to do here is not just say this. This is America co with the papacy. So what's the polluting of the sanctuary strength? How have we looked at that? Um, the uh, taking away of the constitution. Right. Or okay. ignoring, maybe not taking away the constitution, but ignoring it. Okay, so where do we place that specifically? How do we describe that? So we know this has to do with the Constitution. So what exactly, what event do we have to mark Sunday that? Law. Okay, so we have the Sunday Law. So when does the Sunday Law begin in our history that we understand now? Now we have the actual Sunday Law that's going to happen. It still hasn't happened. But so 9-11? Yeah, so we would put this at 9-11, right? So at 9-11... We have the Patriot Act, right? So that that's how we would look at this. Okay. Any any questions or thoughts on that? So that would kind of uh, be like a parallel. We have the restraint of Islam in 1840 after 391 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a restraint of Islam 9/11. Yeah, and we have that Islam. edict of Lucius ties yeah. to that. Okay. Okay. So that. That makes sense. Now, um, let me see here. So just, so we have this fault, Constantinople, 1493. Okay. I'm just ruminating here. So we got that Patriot Act, 9-11. That ties in, polluting the sanctuary of strength. So this, uh, then we have, I shall take away the daily. Obviously, we know that that is in 508, that we mark this and placing the abomination that make it desolate. So now the taking away of the daily, where would we mark that in our history? Like what would that symbolize? Maybe the, the fate of the king of the south, the taking away of wokeism, maybe. Okay, well, explain a little bit more. How would we put that as an event? And, and they're going to place the abomination that make it desolate, right? So that's, of course, we're going to say that that's the Sunday law itself. Yeah, they're talking about it like a pendulum swing. So um, the king of the South philosophy will, in a sense, be taken away, and the conservative religious philosophy will be dominant. Okay. And then, uh, and then you will have the, the Sunday law being brought in. Okay, so you're saying that the taking away of the daily hasn't occurred yet. Correct. Okay. So the daily is paganism. So you're just saying that that's that's wokeism. Right. So that they have to remove this wokeism, whatever this is, that's hindering the Sunday law. Is that basically what you're saying? Well, that's my thoughts. Yes. Yeah. And so, so this has always been the problem. And I've said this many, many times ever since I've been an Adventist is how do we get to the point where we actually have a religious Sunday law, not just in the United States, but in the world? And, and back in the 1990s, that definitely was not clear how that could happen. Now, what we see is that the world has gone crazy and that there would have to be then a, a backlash to what's happening. That is, I would think that most people intellectually don't agree with what's happening, but they have to go along with it because of societal pressures, because of the media. I mean, I've talked to many people. They say, well, you know, I agree with you, but there's no way that I could say that at work because I would lose my job. You know, one of my students works in a bank. She's a bank manager. She has to go along with all this craziness. And you cannot mention to anybody that you work with what you actually think. You have to follow the policies given by the bank. And if, because if you mentioned it to somebody you work with, you don't know they could use that against you, right? So you have to be very careful what you say at work. Now, probably everybody's in the same boat. Probably nobody at work would agree with, with what's happening, but nobody can say it, right? So we would have to think that deep down that everybody knows what's going on is crazy, but the emperor has no clothes. Nobody's going to mention it. 
because they see what happens to people who do uh, try to speak out against it. And they're not willing to do that. So at the point when you have the backlash, you will just see, you know, the floodgates open to kind of mix metaphors. You're going to see that there will be an overwhelming support in the other direction. So, so I think that makes sense that this, this taking away of the daily would have to relate to that in, in some way. So that hasn't happened yet. We don't see wokeism being removed out of the way, but it's, it's happening gradually. Now, when we say pollute the sanctuary of strength, now, part of the problem here, because we're looking at the sanctuary of strength in the historical application as paganism itself. And we're saying, well, the sanctuary of strength in our history is the Patriot Act, which, which isn't pagan or, or, um, which is, is the constitution that's being polluted, right? So the sanctuary of strength is not paganism, it's the constitution. How do we reconcile this with then how we're, we're interpreting the rest of the verse? You understand what I'm asking? Because it seems kind of inconsistent. Because the sanctuary of strength is, well, I guess, you know, for paganism, so, so what we would have to be doing is we're taking the fall of, maybe it's not inconsistent, uh, because the fall of papal Rome, right? So this is about papal Rome falling and this polluting of the sanctuary of strength. So their strength was with, in regard to it being pagan Rome would be this paganism. But I think before in the past, we sort of attached this more to the city of Rome. To, to well to the pantheism or pantheism pantheon so so maybe there is a parallel there but it just doesn't seem like as strong as one as i'd like any thoughts well with paganism it was basically anything goes except on the middle christianity okay and uh, with wokeism it's like anything goes except on the middle christianity Okay, which which would be true. So when it comes to the polluting of the sanctuary of strength by prohibiting, if we're saying that it's the prohibiting of the worship of idols and in the temple, is that undermining their constitution, so to speak? Is that that you know that their sanctuary of strength was this trust in in these institutions that are then being undermined that are, were the foundation of pagan Rome? I don't know. You see the problem, right? I mean, we're comparing the Constitution to pagan worship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the Constitution, you have that right to worship whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's being overthrown by saying, no, you have to worship God on a Sunday or or at least nod nod your cap to whatever God that is, even if you might not want to believe in that God. Just go along with it. Yeah, okay. So so we can see the parallels there. And there's definitely the 391 date that ties us to 9-11 symbolism. Okay, so the taking of, away of the daily. So this is some future event. We're just going to use wokeism. How do you spell wokeism? I think that's how you spell it. So the tide being turned against wokeism. And they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. So... That's simply just Sunday law, but we could even just say image of the beast, and then you know, we have the Sunday law here, and then we have uh, the papacy, the spiritual king of the north shall corrupt by flatteries, flatter with prospects of position material gain. So, so I mean, this is all connected, right? So we're just going to say uh, that he is the USA. That is, the USA is the one that creates the image to the beast and causes all the worship, the world to wonder after the beast. So this is just, uh, okay. So I'm saying that corrupt by flatteries, flattered with prospects of position, material gain. We're going to put here societal, social, buy and sell incentives to observe Sunday. So the people that do know their God, that's going to be, 144,000 shall be strong and do. So 
remain faithful, preach the truth, and win many true converts. And this is going to be the period of the loud cry. How does that look for the present truth application? It definitely works and fits in with what we already understand. You can put this uh, as the present truth, and then you need another zero on that as well. And so the historical application just would have been... All right, you said earlier in this that this sanctuary of strength has a reference to the 391 and a half. Yeah, well, to the 391 in the sense that we're looking at the Constitution as being the sanctuary of strength for the United States, and that's going to be uh, polluted at 9-11, right? And we're just saying the Edict of Theodosius uh, matches that, and that's in 391 AD. 391 obviously ties us to the second woe, and 9-11 is the third woe. Okay, but the Hebrew words for sanctuary of strength, if you take a look at those two, because you've got Hebrew 4720 and Hebrew 4581, right? Yeah. If you subtract the greater from the lesser, you come out with 139. Okay, which is cool. Okay, and then when additively you put the two together, you come out with 9301. Okay, so we get 391 in different iterations. Yes. Okay, good. Well, that definitely helps because <laughs> it supports what we've already said. So let's uh, put this in here uh, as a footnote. So we got Sanctuary of Strength. And I'm going to put the footnote there. Okay, so the n- numbers that we have are, what are they again? H... 4720. That's going to be sanctuary. And then 4581. Yeah, you'll have to correct snatuary. <laughs> yes. And strength. So they equal, what was it 9031 or? Additively 9301. 9301. And. Um, the difference is 139. Correct. Which iterations of 391. Okay, so that's uh, definitely uh, supportive of what we're saying. Um, so I like that. And we know the sanctuary here is a mikdash as well, right? I can just do something here. Okay, so we got um, so 9301. Now it's going to, they're also going to pollute the sanctuary of strength. Just 2490. Now I'd looked at before at this. So pollute the sanctuary of strength is 11,791. And, uh, one of the symbols we have for the 391 is this period of 11,900 days, which is 391 months. Now this happens to be 109 days less than that. And so I'd looked at this before and I was trying to, to puzzle it out exactly what that would mean. So, so I'll try to explain this. Okay. So how am I going to do this? So we're, we all should be familiar with the 391 years can be divided into 12 periods of 391 months on our calendar and 391 months on our calendar is uh, 32 years and seven months. It's also 11,900 days. So for instance, Stephen Jameson was born February 11th, 1969. It's, it's going to be 32 years and seven months before September 11th, 2001. So that means when September 11th, 2001 happened, Stephen was 32 years and seven months old. So that, that symbol of 11,900 is also tied to, um, and I'm trying to remember how that worked. We have 11,900 uh, or no, 391 years, uh, that period of time of the 391 years. I'm trying to remember how we did that. I always forget because uh, there's going to be, let me see here. I'll find it quickly. No, it's not going to help me. Okay. So it's this chart here. 
right? So we have um, 12 periods of 32 years and seven months on the Gregorian calendar is equal to 12 periods of 33 years and seven months on the Islamic calendar. The Islamic calendar uses years that are 12 lunar months, right? So, so this is a cycle, this 391, in which we have 403 months, lunar months, are 391 Gregorian months. And then we have uh, this period of time, 32 years, 0.583 years, 32.583 years is 11,900 days plus 1,190 minutes. Okay, so I don't know, people probably can't see this, it's so tiny here. So there we have it. So this is what I'm talking about here. So we can see that this this number, these numbers here, one nine zero, are part of these this number. Right? You can see here I have all of these periods. There's twelve periods of eleven thousand nine hundred days. Now technically they're eleven thousand nine hundred days and eleven hundred and ninety minutes. Now the other thing that was interesting is a back tune is one hundred and forty four thousand days, and that happens to be. 1190 days longer than this period of 391 years. So 391 years is 142,810 days. So if I switch over here, just to show you what I mean. So I'm, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to take the 403 lunar months, which is equal to 391 Gregorian months, and I multiply it by 29.530587. And you see this period of time. This is 11,900 days. And then this decimal. And so this decimal is, so if I subtract the 11,900 days, this is less than a day, right? So if I multiply it by 24, I get 19 hours, right? So I get 19 hours and I can do it as minutes. But I'm going to, Instead of doing that, I'm going to, um, what did I do wrong? I should have divided it by 24. So this is this decimal. And this decimal, if we do it into hours, we do it into minutes. So that is, right, so there's times, there we go. So that's the number of minutes, 11,000 or 1,190 minutes. You can see that. Now there's some seconds left over. So those seconds are going to be about uh, 15 seconds, but but that's pretty close. Like it's within the minute that we have this. Now, also, if we take this number, so I want to go back here. Um, so that was just the, the period of time. That's the months. Here it is. Okay, so this is this number. If I take this number, uh, no, it's not the number I want. I want this number, and I multiply this by 12. You'll see I get. 142,809, and it's almost 10 days. So we just take this as 142,810 days minus 144,000 days, and we get 1,190 days difference. So, so this 11.9 shows up. So all I'm saying about this pollute the sanctuary of strength, because we've already tied this to the 391. So if we take those numbers and we add them together, they gave us uh, this number. So this was the 9301 plus the word pollute, 2490. And then if I subtract this from 11,900, I'm going to get this number. Now this is not 11,9, right? Which would have been really, really nice, but it is 109. So it has all of the digits of 11,900 in it. So is this just another witness to this symbol of the 391? Would we accept this? Or does this seem too convoluted? Any thoughts on that? No thoughts? I think it adds to the overall tenor of the discussion. Okay. Now, I don't know where, if, if we were going to use it as a span of time, we might be able to add it somewhere, but I'm not sure. Where all I know is, I mean, it'd be nice to connect it to 2001. Obviously, we can do that with the 11,900 from Stephen's birthday to September 11th. 
and, and the one thing we know is if we count from September 11th, um, how do we do that? I think if we count, yeah, if we count from November 9th, so if we go November 9th, 1989, so we know that we can count from Stephen's birthday, 11,900 days to September 11th. And if we count from November 9th, 1989, we get February 11th, 1993. So you can use November 9th and September 11th to connect to Stephen's birthday. And in 1993, uh, since Stephen is born in uh, 69, he was um, uh, 34 on February 11th, 1993. Now, so it doesn't, we don't have an event on that date. But I know. 24. 24. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 24. Okay. I knew I was doing something wrong. So 24. So you turn 24 in 1993 on February 11th, and that's going to be 1190 days after November 9th. And 24 is significant, 24 hours in a day related to time. So all we're, all we're saying here is that we have all of these symbols that tie November 9th, September 11th, is 391, all of this symbolism together. So Angela has something in the comments. I always have a hard time. Her stuff's so cryptic how it's written. Okay, so she's, you're saying in Deuteronomy 33:25. Yeah, gonna... it just came into my mind. I thought they're going to really consider this abstract and weird, but this is what came into my mind. I thought, let's share it. Let's look at it and share it. Maybe there is some logic in it. Okay, well, they su- shoes shall be iron and brass. So uh, iron and brass, that relates to the 2520, both in... A Daniel chapter 4 and Leviticus 26, those symbols of iron and brass. Your heaven shall be iron, your earth shall be brass. In Daniel chapter 4, uh, there's a band of iron and brass. And it says, thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and so shall thy strength be. Now, um, this isn't related to the other word strength that we were looking at. Just to, Just a note on that. Uh, so these are symbols of Roman and Greek kingdoms and philosophies. So paganism. And as thy days remind me of the daily, so shall their strength be. Shoes associate with trampling, polluting, treading. But uh, the 4515 says a bolt. 4515, that's the word shoes, means a bolt. Only once is shoe used in the sense in the King James, iron and brass. Strength only, uh, let me see. I've not added these numbers. The statement is part of Jacob's blessing to Asher, right? So Asher. Okay. Well, something to consider. I'm not, it, it is kind of interesting. Anyway, so we have a little bit of work to do, but I think we're getting somewhere as far as um, we can connect the historical application to this present truth application quite clearly that, um, the 391 of the Edict of Theodosius uh, ties us together. And then uh, this polluting of the Sanctuary of Strength, we're going to look into a bit more. Okay. Okay. So let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today. Please be with each person, help them in their daily struggles, and help us in our study, our personal study, to come close to you, help us to trust in you, and ask for your angels' care and protection. Thank you for all the blessings of your word and the way that you work in our lives. Help us to continue to study and and uh, bring us together again to study your word according to thy will. We pray and ask in Jesus' name.